so um so today's topic is krishna's disappearance so um so before we start uh, i don't know what is the process here like you can directly start from mangala charan or you sing radha mata i think kirtan has been done already so i can it's up to your choice probably we can we can do okay. whatever you feel so we can start from mangala charan and then we start the you know hari krishna ओम ज्ञान ज्ञानाजन शलाकया चक्षुर्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूपकदाम ददा स्वपदाक वंदेय श्रीगुर श्रीयुत पदकमल श्रीगुर वैष्णवांश श्रीरूप सागर जात सहगन रघुनाथान्वित तम सजीव साधवैत सवदूत परीजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सहगन ललिता श्री विशाखान्वितांश नमो विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे वाछाकल्पतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादिगौर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो कृष्ण सीज इन भगवदगीता फोर पॉइंट नाइन जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्यम एवं युवेति तत्वता त्यक्वा देहम पुनर्जन्म नेति मेति सो अर्जुन सो कृष्ण एवरीथिंग वेदर वेन ही अपियर्स वॉट एवर ही डज एंड हाउ ही डिसअपियर्स एवरीथिंग इज ट्रांसेंडेंटल एंड मिस्टीरियस इट्स बियॉन्ड यू नो बियॉन्ड आर सेंसेस बियॉन्ड आर टाइनी इंटेलिजेंस सो दैट इज वाई Anyone who understand this, you know, even this much, his, you know, appearance and his transcendental activity, he doesn't have to take birth again in this material world. So, um, we basically celebrate Krishna's appearance. There is no such day called Krishna's disappearance day. We never heard about that. That you ever celebrated Krishna's disappearance day? It's always Krishna's appearance day. But for Acharyas. For 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 Vaishnavas, we celebrate both appearance and disappearance day. And amongst appearance and disappearance day, <clears throat> the more um, uh, you know, more important is the um, disappearance day for a Vaishnava because that very day they go back to Krishna, right? Appearance day, okay, for us it's very you know, for for us it's very you know, can be jubilee and that that you know we got a uh, association of Vaishnava, but the someone. Uh, acharya when he comes from you know from the goal of for us to preach for for them it's not very delightful thing you know coming to this material world but going back it's a very jubilant thing for them as well so the disappearance is more important than appearance day but we celebrate both for the vaishnavas but especially uh, for, for in krishna's case there is no such thing called disappearance day because that's the very uh, disheartening thing uh, for devotees and krishna goes back from this material world so <clears throat> so krishna uh, you know uh, see ram leela is easy to understand because lord ramachandra is maryada purushottam okay so whatever he did he did under maryada you know under some boundaries just like a human being an ideal human being so it's is very easy to comprehend whatever he did but krishna leela it's beyond comprehension and that is why our acharyas they gave us you know the, the different commentaries and all that the explanations to make us understand that whatever krishna does it has some reasons behind it outwardly it appears sometimes you know very sometimes very uh immoral you know to the normal people but it has some reason some some background to it so as you know krishna when he appears he has three main reasons for his appearance okay in this material world paritranaay sadhuna vinashaya chadushkrutam dharma sansthavanarthaya sambhavam yuge he comes to 
protect his devotees, establish dharma, and destroy the demons or miscreants. Okay. Now, basically, he can he can destroy the demon sitting in his own abode like that, or Mother Durga is enough to kill them. But basically, he comes to relish, you know, different dealers with his devotees. So. He was here on this on this material world. He was here like for 125 years. He was 125 years old when he was in the battlefield of Mahabharat. Um, and after that, another 30 to 35 years he stayed uh, on this on this planet. So when he was now when he's all Leela has you know finished, so now it's time to go back. So Krishna was thinking, now it's my time to go back. What about Yadus? Hmm? They were Krishna's Parshad. And what, what about them? So Krishna has three kinds of Parshad. Okay? Nitya Siddhas, Sadhana Siddha, and the demigods. Okay? So Nitya Siddha, th those who come from Golok Vrindavan, when Krishna comes to this material world, or Vaikuntha. The second is Sadhana Siddha. Sadhana Siddha means, for example, even if you perfect your life in this material world, you're, you lived your whole life Krishna conscious the way it should be. And at the time of death, you remember Krishna. Still, you will not go back to Goloka directly. You will take birth in the universe where Krishna is already doing his Dila. So you will take birth amongst the, you know, Krishna's Parshad in that Brahmanda, in that universe. And there, you get on the job training by Nitya Siddha Parshad. And then when Krishna finally winds up his Leela from that Brahman or universe, you'll go back to Goloka along with other devotees. That's, that's how it should be. And the third category is demigods. As you know that when uh, Brahma approached uh, Chirudakshai Vishnu along with the demigods, when Mother Earth approached Brahma in the beginning and Chirudakshai Vishnu said, okay, I will appear. Very soon I'll appear. Uh, you tell the demigods to take birth in Yadu dynasty. Okay? That's the beginning, the very first chapter of Krishna book. So even the demigods appeared in Yadu dynasty. So now in the Krishna's Parshad, some will go back to Goloka or Vikuntha, or some will go back to heaven, heavenly planets. So, <clears throat> so Krishna said, if I don't, if I don't take care of this Yadu before my disappearance, then they will create havoc on this earth because they are so much powerful. They are protected by me. They are my relatives. Even demigods cannot defeat them because so powerful. So what will do, they do after, you know, when I'm not here? They were already doing something, you know. Uh, okay. So uh, Krishna was thinking I have to find a way uh, to wind them up. And Krishna thought like just like in the jungle, uh, in the forest fire, how the forest fire started in summer? Because of the dry leaves, they rub against each other. The temperature is so high, they keep on rubbing, rubbing, and then the fire starts. So Krishna thought, okay, if the Yadus, they fight with the, each other, then it's easy. That's, that's the way it should be. So this Leela is called Moshe Leela. Uh, why it's called Moshe Leela, we'll discuss later on. So there are different reasons why Krishna did this. Okay, why Krishna, you know, uh, made Yadu disappear before he disappeared from this planet. So the different reasons. First reason is, the, as I said, the Yadus were very powerful at that time. No one could stop them. They were like uncontrolled tides in the ocean. So question is, if no one can kill them, then Krishna could have killed them in one shot. Why didn't Krishna kill them? Because they were his family members and they were not doing anything uh, you know, very unjust that for the reason that for Krishna that the Krishna should kill them, and also Krishna was not the king, though he was called Dwarka Dish, but Ugrasen Maharaj Ugrasen, he was the king of Dwarka. So technically speaking, is the duty of the king to punish the miscreants. So Krishna was technically not a king; he was not entitled as a king, so he cannot take that action. So Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says. The many Yadu Vanshis, they got very proud. Oh, Krishna is there. We are Dwarka Vasis. Krishna will protect. 
So they will start doing little adharma activities also. So Krishna said, okay, I have to wind them up. They, they are going to really create havoc. Jeev Goswami says, how can, how can Krishna Parshad, how can they do wrong? They are Krishna's Parshad. But Krishna, Jeev Goswami says, Krishna's Maya, Yoga Maya can bewilder anyone. Okay. Second reason was, Krishna thought, these, these Yadus, they love me so much. No doubt they have so much love for Krishna. They cannot tolerate my separation. So they will do, I don't know what they will do. So they must disappear before my disappearance. See, Krishna killed many demons. As you know, in, in the childhood, every day before lunch, after lunch, you know, Krishna used to kill demons. Even through then Pandavas, he killed many dharmis and demons in the battlefield of Mahabharat. So, so Krishna thought they must die, you know, because some of them doing a dharma also. Third reason, <clears throat> Krishna thought, I have to wind up my leela here and I have to go to another Brahman to do my leela. So I have, to, I need my people over there to perform. Just like a circus, you know, a circus comes to one town, they wind up everything and they go to the other town. So before Krishna has to start his leela to other universe, so he wants to send his parshad before he goes to that universe. Just like it happened in this universe. The demigods appear first, then Krishna came. The same thing. So Sridhar Swami, our Acharya, one of our Acharya, is the original commentator on Srimad Bhagavatam. He says, very important message, he says. He says, everything in this material world is temporary. Everything. Even if you become the most powerful person, the richest person in this world, even you become the family member of Krishna, you must die one day. You have to die one day. So he says, by hearing this Moshe Leela, our faith in this material world should reduce. Okay? And, you know, people... You know, this uh, in India, of course, you all, all are Indian, I think, all mostly. So, they, they, you know, you used to sing, Hum honge kaam ya vek din. And then recently some song came, Apna time aayega. But, you don't have this false faith. Krishna is saying, look at my family, even they have to die. Don't stay in illusion, come back to me. Do devotional service and come back to me. That's the purpose in life. Fourth reason, fourth reason is curse of Gandhari. Even Gandhari curse Krishna. The way you made, you know, the, the gurus fight with each other, the family member fight with each other. The same way your family will die fighting each other. Okay. And the fifth reason is Krishna is teaching us how much a damage, how much damage a Vaishnava Prad can do. Okay, as you know that uh, you know this yadu become very powerful when you when you get power, you know the you know there's a dialogue with great power comes great responsibility, but it was not applicable here. With great powers, you know many times you get proud. So the samb, you know the son of Krishna, you know in India some people call samba samba, but he's not samba, he's samb. You know, samba was the villain in Shole movie. So samba is the samb, the son of Krishna. He, you know, what they did, uh, there were some rishis have come to, uh, sages have come to Dwarka. So putting a mushal in, you know, they, they acted like a pregnant lady by putting mushal under the, under the, under the sari. You know, understand mushal? Balram has mushal, you know, this, you know, in India, this, uh, this Pahlwans, they, they use that to exercise. So they, they, they hid that mushal under the sari. And asking the sages, please bless this lady and please tell us, is boy or girl? So these sages understood, they're making fun. They're making fun. They got angry and they gave curse. The brahmanas gave curse that whatever is under, under whatever is there in your stomach, that will re, that'll become reason of your, that, uh, that, that'll become the reason of the destruction of the whole dynasty, Yadu dynasty. So they they really got scared and they went to Ugras and Maharaj that uh, what to do. 
and literally he gave birth to mushal and then ugrasen mara said okay now the mistake is done and uh, we have to do something so then uh, by order of ugrasen mara they made a powder of that mushal completely grinded and this powder was thrown into the ocean the powder was thrown into the ocean but at least one another metal piece remained iron piece remained that was also thrown in the ocean and that uh, how many of you can raise hands how many you been to uh, gujarat especially somnath how many of you you can raise hands on on, on zoom okay hemant prabhu rahul prabhu okay only two okay no problem i'll take you there okay okay so so now when when this powder was thrown into the ocean so this powder was you know tra traveling in different places going around this and that and then got accumulated up at a place called prabhasa kshetra okay prabhasa kshetra is actually somnath now modern day we call somnath temple like in gujarat uh, there is a railway station is viraval the city is viraval from viraval is like 10 kilometers away 10 to 15 kilometers is somna temple okay and from somna temple is hardly 1 kilometer walk to prabhasa kshetra where finally krishna disappeared <clears throat> so actually somnath is the modern name because of the somna temple or viraval but actually originally it was prabhasa kshetra okay so this all this iron powder got accumulated in prabhasa kshetra made a small uh, small island not very big island like a like a small tila you know it was a very small place but and then from this particular place uh, a bamboo or a sugar cane not exactly sugar cane not exactly bamboo something like similar to that start growing okay and start growing and all this iron powder was going into that the bamboo i'll use the word bamboos but it's not exactly bamboos don't take it as literal bamboo but those sticks were growing with that iron powder and whatever the iron piece was thrown into the ocean that iron piece was swallowed by a fish the later on fish was captured by a fisherman then when fisherman cut the fish he got the iron piece he he sold that iron piece to one hunter that hunter name was jara and jara made an arrow out of it from that iron piece okay so now after that curse all the inauspicious things started happening in dwarka and then they explain everything to krishna krishna knows everything but still yadu is explained to krishna and ye ho gaya it is all this brahmana curse and all that so krishna called everyone he said we should leave dwarka and we should go to place called prabhasa kshetra okay and we should do tapasya we do yagya we do different kind of you know atonement activities it may help to reduce this effect of this curse so sud if you read bhagavatam 11th canto shukadev goswami clearly says they first sat in the boat and then they came to the ground and from there they boarded the chariots and they went to prabhas kshetra so if you been to dwarka if you been to dwarka in india so there is a dwarka the the modern dwarka city and there is a bhet dwarka which is in the ocean okay so krishna's residence was in bhet dwarka which is in the ocean and the office was in the modern city of dwarka so all the residence all 11 uh, 16108 palaces plus more palaces all the dwarka vasis were living in dwarka of course krishna submerged dwarka under ocean and there are different proofs also for that we are not going in that direction and also uh, when he, all the males actually went to prabhasa kshetra not females not kids and uh, so krishna sent some message through daruk which we will discuss later so now when they all reached the prabhasa kshetra one day by krishna's will they all started drinking one you know intoxicated element 
called Maria Drava, something like that. I don't remember the name, Maria Drava, something like that. It's very intoxicating. So they were all intoxicated. And when you are intoxicated, you don't know what is right and what is wrong. So I think the, 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 the argument started between Sataki and Kritvarma. So they become heated argument. Gradually, the whole Yadu were divided into two parties. And they started fighting with each other. First, they fought with their weapons. So when the weapons were exhausted, now they took those sticks only, which are there in the Pravasa Kshetra. Exactly those sticks, which has that same iron powder, and they start hitting each other and start killing each other. Even they, they are so intoxicated, they even attacked Krishna Balram. Even Krishna Balram took the sticks and, you know. <laughs> so when this, this way, all the Yadus assembled in Prabhasa Kshetra died. So Krishna, then Krishna left that place, Prabhasa Kshetra, exact place which is called that place now is it's a small place which is called Prabhasa Kshetra. He came to a place which is now called Bhalka Tiratha, which is again part of Somnath. That place is called Bhalka Tiratha. Krishna came there and sat there under a under a people tree. Okay, he sat there, and uh, mostly you never find Krishna's deities lying down like you know he's relaxing, you know along with the people tree, very relaxing, crossing, uh, you know, one leg on top of the other. This kind of deity you will find only here in, in Somnath. Otherwise, you see only Vishnu lying on the, on the bed. But Krishna lying down like this is the only one deity there. So, what is the meaning of Bhalka? Bhala means arrow. Bhalka Tirat. It becomes Bhalka Tirat later on. So, Krishna was lying down in a Shayan posture, sleeping posture. And from Triveni Sangam, in Prabhasa Kshetra, there is a Triveni Sangam also. One hunter, whose name was Jara, he thought, because Krishna's, you know, when Krishna's crossing his leg like that, the feet was moving. So as you know, Krishna's palms and the bottom of feet, they are red in color. So this Jara, the hunter thought, is, is a deer, you know, moving around the deer mouth or something like that. He shot an arrow. And this was the same arrow. Okay? made from the same iron he got from the fish, fisherman. So when he shot the arrow, that arrow hit the thumb, the toe of Krishna. Huh? And people say Krishna died. <laughs> okay? So now you tell me, have you ever heard any case in your life that someone, you know, someone was Someone's toe was shot by bullet and he died. Doesn't happen like that. That's a misconception. Okay. Even uh, if you remember one time in the Mahabharata, one time when Bhishma, Bhishma Dev was fighting like a lion. He was fighting so vigorously that Arjuna practically could not face Bhishma Dev. Arjuna getting tired. He was sweating. So sweat was coming into eyes. You know, he was doing like this and shooting arrows. But Bhishma was shooting arrow one after the other. So one arrow was coming right at Krishna, Arjuna's neck. But Arjuna could not see because, you know, the sweat was there in his eyes. That very moment, Krishna simply tapped his foot on the, on the chariot and chariot went down, in the, you know, in the in the earth and that that arrow simply hit the helmet of arjuna so krishna saved arjuna and then right after that bhishma dev shot three arrows on arjuna seeing that arjuna is not ready krishna stood up and took three arrow right in his chest so what is more fatal taking arrow in the chest or on the on the toe. At that time, Krishna didn't die, right? But anguthe pe tir laga mar gaye. That's that's really. Anyways, this is just some kind of misconception people have 
but if there is a time left i remember another thing that people have misconception about a kalavya also you know people take side of a kalavya it was unjust uske sath jyati hui you know all that blah blah if the if time permits i'll tell you at the end this is also another myth people have uh so krishna but krishna did his leela krishna did this leela to bewildered atheist people okay even i will tell you later on krishna left his body is there in bhagavatam krishna actually you know krishna left a material body as well kind of material body but arjuna did the last rites of that body to bewilder the atheistic class of people who thinks krishna is an ordinary human being or maybe extraordinary human being avajananti mam mudha manushim tanumashrita param bhavam ajananto mam maya vimohito they think i am a human being they don't know my param swabhav my transcendental nature they bewildered by my maya so krishna keep them bewildered khush raho aap bhi ultimately they krishna's sons you know bachche hain sab bhagwan ke theek hai khush raho stay happy no problem you are happy this way let it be but jara when jara came he saw you know, what i did jara felt very bad he was feeling sorry but krishna explained everything don't worry you know krishna explained everything to him and then one chariot came and krishna showed his uh, transcendental form to jara 400 forms there in the 11th canto bhagavatam there's one painting and then jara went back to vaikuntha now there is another misconception in india especially they think that jara in his previous life was bali sugri's brother as lord ram shot bali behind the bushes the same way in this life bali did the same karmo ka phal so the, this is not this is see anyone knows who was jara in his previous life can write in chat box anyone knows who was jara in his previous life okay jara in his previous life was bhrigu muni bhrigu muni see one time there was an assembly of demigods and the topic of the assembly was who is supreme out of this trilogy brahma vishnu mahesh who is supreme so that was the discussion point so they have appoint they have appointed one personality to find out this who is who is supreme so he was brigu muni so brigu muni supposed to do the survey and submit his report so first brigu muni went to brahma ji satyaloka now brigu muni son of brahma so it's it's a it's a duty of son to pay obeisance to father and of course he is brahma not ordinary father but when brigu muni went there he didn't say anything no dandavats no hare krishna nothing he just stood silent brahma go first at the first sight brahma got happy my son has come to meet me but when brahma observed that brigu muni is not following any etiquette brahma got angry but brahma being father fatherly figure and actual father he controlled his anger so here brigu muni did offense from his mind offense on the level of mind then he went to kailash to lord shiva now lord shiva and brigu muni are brothers how they are brother because lord shiva appeared from this place of brahma from the eyebrows between the eyebrows of brahma in this material world technically originally lord brahma is not father of lord shiva but because lord shiva appeared from from this place from the bhikkhuti of brahma that is why lord shiva so the brahma is called father of lord shiva okay and brigu muni is also son of brahma lord shiva is son of brahma 
So this way they are brothers. So Lord Shiva becomes so happy that my brother has come to Kailash. Lord Shiva got up from his asan. He ran to embrace Bhrigu Muni. But Bhrigu Muni said, stop. You are dirty fellow. You're putting this crematorium ashes on your body. You have snakes all around. You have metal locks of ears. You are so dirty. Stay away from me. So Lord Shiva really got angry. He took his Trishul. He was about to kill Bhrigu Muni. But Parvati stopped Lord Shiva. And here, Bhrigu Muni did offense by Vani, by speech. That's one degree higher than mind. And then he went to Vaikuntha. There, Vaikuntha, all the seven gates are there. Even Jay Vijay didn't, you know, uh, stop Bhrigu Muni because of Brahmana. And he, when he went inside, Lakshmi Devi was massaging feet of Vishnu. And here nothing No Hare Krishna, no Dandavats, nothing. He just came. He banged the chest of Lord Vishnu with his feet. With his foot, actually. Now, what was the reaction of Lord Vishnu? He immediately got up from his chair. He took the feet of, he took the foot of Bhrigu Muni, started massaging. He said, my dear Lord, my dear Brahmana, my chest is as powerful as Vajra, like a stone. But your feet are soft like a lotus. So let me massage your feet. So here, Bhrigu Muni did the highest level of Aparad by his body. He actually, you know, uh, hit Lord Vishnu with his foot. It was very uh, serious offense. But Lord Vishnu's reaction was totally different, totally opposite. He didn't get angry at all. But of course, Lakshmi Devi got angry because here, you know, there is Sri Vatsa. Lakshmi Devi resides in the chest of Lord, Lord Vishnu. So I think uh, only in her mind, she cursed all the Brahmanas. The Brahmanas will never become rich. I will never go to Brahmana's house. That's why the true Brahmanas are very poor. Those who are genuine Brahmanas, by guna and karma, those who are genuine Brahmanas, they are naturally poor. They are not very rich. Okay. So then Bhrigu Muni filed his report that out of these three, Lord Vishnu is supreme. This, this story is also there in Krishna book, in the 10th canto of Bhagavatam. So, but because he did this offense, um, result to milna tha na, some reaction has to be there. So he got the body of he, he, he got the body of a hunter, a jara, low born. Okay. So he became the hunter. And but Krishna delivered him. Okay. So he was Bhrigu Muni. Sorry. Now, as, as I was telling that when Krishna assembled all the Yadus to go to Prabhasakshetra. In that assembly, Uddhav was also there. Okay. But Uddhav understood that Krishna has some big plan. He has a plan to wind up his pastimes and all. So Uddhav said, please take me along. I cannot live without you. But Krishna said, no, you are not going to Parbhasakshetra. I have other assignment for you. You go to because after my disappearance, you need to preach. Okay? You need to set the standards, make an example. So you better go to Badrika Ashram. And after you disappear, after you, and at the end, you will come back to me. Don't worry about that. But right now, you should go to Badrika Ashram. Okay? So be before Uddhav left, Uddhav requested Krishna, please give me some Upadesh, some teachings. So there Krishna started speaking, which are there in the 11th canto of Bhagavatam and also called Uddhav Gita. So, you know, and then Uddhav left for Badrika Ashram. And then we know that uh, Uddhav, uh, then Vidura, Vidura met, you know, so it, he met Maitre Muni in, uh, there is in third canto, Uddhav met Maitre Muni in, uh, or met Vidura also in, in the, it is, that is in the third canto of Bhagavatam. 
So now Krishna came back to that Prabhasa Kshetra. Of course, is everything is Prabhasa Kshetra, but that particular point, which is one kilometer from Somna Temple, near Tirveni Sangam. So there he saw that Lord Balaram also went back. You know, went back to Goloka. Now then Krishna sat there. That place is called Goloka Tirtha, where exactly that Krishna's footprint was there, installed there. And that's the exact spot from where Krishna went back. Is there in Prabhasa Kshetra? So that is called Golok Tirtha. So Krishna sat there in meditation, kind of thing, closed his eyes. All the demigods appeared in front of Krishna. They all singing stutis and all. But Krishna closed his eyes. There's a reason Krishna closed his eyes. It's not that Krishna is going to meditate on something. But Krishna deliberately closed his eyes. Acharya tells the reason. Because let's go to the past. Uh, sometimes before this Leela, Moshe Leela and all that, Lord Brahma came to uh, uh, came to Krishna in Dwarka. He offered garland, chandan leaf to Krishna, did stutis and all. And then Brahma said, uh, Oh my Lord, all your purpose is full, fulfilled in, on this material world. Uh, you know, all your leelas have now almost done. So now you can go back. Because why Brahma did this? Because Brahma is the one who made the request for Krishna to come. Okay, When you invite some big person for a, some purpose, then, then you also understand that he's a very big person. He has, his time is very important. So you can tell them, okay, now you know the purpose is solved. You can go for other thing and all that. So that's why Brahma came and told Krishna, okay, now you can wind up your past times here. But I have one request. So be, on the way you're on the way back to Goloka, uh, my home is on the way, Satyaloka. You know, if you can visit my home for some time, kind of thing, you know. We also do that. So by the end at that time, when Krishna sat and Goloka Tirtha. All the demigods appeared. So Krishna closed his eyes. Ki ab ye sab bolenge, otherwise, they will. if I make eye contact with them, then all the demigods will say, Krishna, please come to my home. Please come to my home. Please come to us. So Krishna doesn't want to. You know. So that's why he simply closed his eyes. That only he, he has to, uh, only he has to stop in Brahma's house, no one else's house. Uh, so, <clears throat> So Krishna sat in Golok Tirtha. Only few could see Krishna going back to Goloka. For other demigods, it was just a, uh, it's just a, like one moment they could see Krishna, other moment they couldn't see Krishna. It's like a flash of light, he disappeared. But like Brahma, Lord Shiva, Narada Muni, another some few, they could see Krishna is actually flying back to Golok Vrindavan. So, <clears throat> so another another thing at Bhalaka Tirtha happened when Krishna was sitting in Bhalaka Tirtha before Jara shot the arrow. Daruk came over there. You know, Daruk. Daruk was Krishna's driver, Sarathi. So when Daruk came there looking for Krishna, so he came on chariot. He he, he told. You know, Krishna, to please, you know, I, I'm here to take back to Dwarka. Please come, come back to Dwarka. At that time, Krishna says, "Stop, wait for some time. There is something going to happen here." So at that time, that Rath, that chariot, Krishna's chariot, you know, it flew back to Vaikuntha because that chariot was not from this earth. Daruk saw this from his own eyes. He was totally bewildered. Then Daruk told. Uh, sorry, Krishna told that all the Yadus are dead now. All Yadus are dead. I am going to disappear. Balram is going to disappear. Everyone will be going back. But you do one thing. You go back to Dwarka. Give this news to all the remaining Dwarka Vasis, all the widows. To give this news to them. Tell Arjun specifically. He can come here, do my last rites. I am leaving so-called body here. And also take my Patranis back 
to Indraprastha. And remaining members of my family back to Indraprastha. So this message was taken. So this message was given by Darug. So many widows, they came to Prabhasakshetra. So they become Sati along with their husband. And Krishna took, uh, Arjuna took Krishna's wives along with him with Vajranab also. He was very small baby at that time. Vajranab is a great grandson of Krishna who later become the king of Raja. Uh, Vaj, uh, Raja uh, Bhajishri Maharaj made him king of Raja. And Vajranab installed many deities in Raj, you know, many, many deities. And some of them were very famous. Um, you know, Govindev, Gopinath, Mother Mohan, Balaramji, Vrinda Devi, and uh, we have Adi, Keshav, Hari Dev. Okay. We have four uh, Srinathji, which is in you now Nadwara. And four shivlings, you know, Kameshwar Mahadev, Bhuteshwar Mahadev, Shakleshwar Mahadev, and um, okay. in Mathura it was Bhuteshwar, on Govardhan is Chakleshwar, in Vrindavan is Gopeshwar, and in Kamevan, Kameshwar Mahadev. So four, four shivlings and many other deities he established, Vajranav. So even Devaki Vasudev, they came to Prabhasakshetra. Rohini came to Prabhasakshetra. They also disappeared from the same place. Okay. So, Sri Navishwana Chakri Thakur, in his Sarada Darshani Tika commentary, he gives a small story about Musha Leela to make us understand Musha Leela. He says, one time one magician came to the king. Okay. And magician said, give me some money. Okay. So, king gave him some, you know, uh, some golden necklace, some coins and all that. So this magician, he was taking one, one item at a time and making them disappear. And then finally what the magician did, he, he disappeared in front of the king by entering into the fire. So king was very, uh, feeling very sad. Oh, the magician died. He entered into the fire. But actually, magician was there. So magician sent his son with all the money. He disappeared in front of the king. And finally, even magician came in front of the king. He, he told the king, don't feel sad. It's a, it's a trick. It didn't happen in reality. It's just a trick. So Sri Ravishwanath Chakri Thakur says, if a small magician can do this, so Krishna, who's, he can do anything with his Yoga Maya. He is Yogeshwara. He is, he's all powerful. So Krishna can disappear also like that, you know. His appearance and disappearance, just like appearance and disappearance of sun. We should not be bewildered by that. So devotees, bhaktya mamabhi janati, the devotees, they understand all these activities done by Krishna. When he appears in, in, in the prison of Mathura or he disappears from the Bhasakshetra and whatever he does in between, is all transcendental. They are all transcendental. Okay. But in order to understand these activities of Krishna, we need, we need a translator. We need an interpreter. That's why we, are, we have our acharyas. We have their commentaries. Let's say you go to China. You can't understand their language unless you have the interpreter to translate. Same way, Krishna's activities, even Krishna's mercy is difficult to understand. Sometimes you get mercy of Krishna, but you know your life goes topsy turvy by getting Krishna's mercy. But in association of devotees, they tell you, "Oh, is Krishna's kripa on you? Nothing to worry." Then you understand. Oh, 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 fine, fine. So that's why you need devotees, sangha. You need devotee association to understand Krishna's activity, Krishna's mercies, everything about Krishna. Kuto kuch samaj nahi aata. Krishna is a dokshaja. He is beyond. Agar Prabhupada nahi hote, the Prabhupada is not there, our predecessor Acharyas are not there, hame kya pata lagana tha, who is Krishna, who is not Krishna. Right? Hum bhi yehi soch rahe hote, he is a characterless person with so many girlfriends and all that. He had love affair with someone else, got married to someone else, he is a cheater. That's what people say. Hum bhi wahi usi category mein hote. All glories to our Acharya. We should be thankful to them. 
by their mercy, by devotees' mercy, you can understand Krishna. Bhaktya Mahabhijanati. They understood Krishna by their books. We understand Krishna. We try to understand Krishna. Even if you understand Krishna 0.0000001%, your life is perfect. Or itana bi samajad hai, it's a big thing. Okay? Because in order to understand Krishna, you need Krishna. Because Krishna says, you know, I, I appear by my own will. You cannot order Krishna. Jitna Krishna samaj me aayenge, that is also because of his kripa. We don't have that intelligence to understand Krishna. Okay? Krishna says, uh, uh, what is the shloka in the 10.11? Uh, Anyone knows 10.11? Hmm? Ah, uh, Krishna says, I means the set of devotees, upon them I'm mer being merciful, I, dis uh, I, uh, I supply all the knowledge and everything within the heart, just like when you ignite a lamp, all the darkness goes away. But Tesham means, Tesham Satad Yukta Nam Bhajitam Priti Purvakam. Those who totally engross in my thoughts, in my, you know, in my bhakti, so, is Krishna's mercy only we need? Krishna's mercy comes to Radharani. Radharani mercy comes to, you know, just like we can go other way. We need Vaishnava Kripa to get the mercy of Guru. It's not that, you know, only Guruji and Krishna. Baki Vaishnava get tail lena. It should not be like that. So, we have to please the Vaishnava around us also. If, if we work cooperatively, all the Vaishnavas are happy. Then your Guru Dev is happy. And Guru Dev is happy, Prabhupada is happy. And Prabhupada give you your mercy, Lord Nityan Prabhu will give you your mercy. By Lord Nityan's mercy, you get Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy. By getting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, you get Radharani's mercy. And you get Radharani's mercy, you get Krishna's mercy, and this way you understand Krishna. Okay. So I like to uh, put full stop here. And if someone has any comments or any suggestions or feedback or any questions, so please, uh, we can ask. And I'm sorry, I don't have good English. I don't speak good English. And my English is very bad. But uh, maybe Samaj Agya Hoga, what I wanted to say. <laughs> no, it's very wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, okay. I really touch upon a beautiful, beautiful thing, how... Um, Krishna's like, you know, uh, appearance and disappearance is very difficult to understand. And definitely this topic is something um, is confusing for many people, even for devotees, like, you know, why it is. And as you were mentioning, like, even, even how, like, you know, Krishna leaving the body and Arjuna doing the samskaras for Krishna, all this thing, it's more confusing and bewilderment. But how Acharyas defines and, and, and describes, like, you know, the Vishwanti Kavit Thakur, it can be right you know how we give an example that you have mentioned that you know so it's like simple magician can do certain things right you know um definitely it is it is it is not so much wonder for krishna to do that and um and you gave a very nice comment past you swami where like you know uh well, showing this all the separation of yadu dynasty and krishna are trying to show that everything in this world is temporary and actually this this is a lesson i think we have to always um meditate upon Saying that it's definitely temporary, so we have to work up on something which we have to we have to work on something <clears throat> something permanent, right? So that actually actually gives us a kind of relation to this this learning. And um, thank you so much again for giving this wonderful uh, session. So before that, I would like to do short announcement. Uh, the Buddhist, any questions or comment? Uh, definitely, you can you can do. Um, yeah, very very beautiful background we have put. You know, 
वृंदावन You know, His Holiness Kupal Krishna Swami Maharaj says that questions, two surat me question nahi aate hain. Either you understood everything or you understood nothing. So we, um, so everyone can visit our website. So all the updates we can um, see on our program, our programs. So every Wednesday we have one just sangha. Um, this this week we have we have His Grace Sukhdev Prabhu speaking, and um, this Sunday His Grace Sukhdev Prabhu Prabhu will be speaking. So please do not miss this opportunity. Uh, it is from uh, Bhakti Vedanta Minister, so Prabhu disciple, and definitely you would not like to miss this Sunday program. And uh, any devotees who like to join Bhakti Vichas, we have uh, Bhakti Vichas uh, happening in uh, different areas. Please you can join this association. And there is every day from Monday to Friday from 12 p.m. Uh, to 12 15. There is Bhagavad Gita reading. Uh, devotees can join that also. And every morning from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. Uh, you can uh, join the classes. And also, like you know, all the classes uh, that has been happening, you can always visit our Skana Bergen uh, YouTube website. Uh, the videos will be uploaded there. Uh, please uh, view that and uh, you know participating in the social media, sharing the devotees, uh, sharing and all those things. Thank you so much again. I have, a, I have a question. Uh, this is in, in New Jersey, right? Yes. Sir. Bergen. <laughs> it's how, how how big is the city? This small. It's county, right? Bergen County. Bergen County. Uh, so uh, in a county, there are multiple cities. So we have okay. uh, we, this particular, uh, our center is in Paramas. There's a city Paramas. Paramas. Yeah. Okay. So in New Jersey, we have uh, main three temples. Mm -hmm. One is uh, Scone of Tuaco. Uh, one is uh, Scone of New Jersey, uh, uh, like Scone of New Jersey in Tuaco. One is in Central New Jersey, and uh, we are we are actually a center. Like we we rent a place, uh, it's a church, so we're running running that one. In oh, okay. There must be cold out there. It'll be a lot of cold, you know. Must um, be right. Yeah, it is cold weather, but uh, thankfully, like you know, this week or two, it's it's really not not very cold. I, I, if if I uh, if I may ask, Prabhuji, where are you from, basically, bro? I'm from Nepal. Actually, my I'm husband of Kalin Priya. <laughs> oh, Hari <laughs> Bol. <laughs> oh, Krishna. <laughs> this is also like, you know, <laughs> it is difficult. Sometimes, you know, uh, in, uh, difficult to understand Vaishnav Leela also. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Krishna. I, you know I have heard about you a lot. Like, you know, um, even when she was doing Bhakti Sastri, we were devotees. I was also in Vrindavan too. Uh -huh. I've heard about you a lot. Uh, uh, your, a, your, uh, your knowledge and everything, you know. <laughs> That's uh, really, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> great. Thank you, bro. Thank you so much, and I yeah, thank you. And hopefully, thank I can. Everyone. We would love to see you once again and again. Like you know, any devotees, yeah. any questions are coming, please. Uh, you can, you can ask. I, I, I love when people ask question. When devotees ask question, I really love to answer. Someone can, you know, or if you have five minutes, then I can explain the Eklavya misconception. Eklavya also, you can, yeah, I was thinking about that. So, before that, like, you know, uh, I mean, uh, this, I will ask a question that, um, I mean, you were mentioning that, like, you know, okay, it's it's to bewilder the atheistic, atheistic people, like, you know, um, about Krishna. So, rather than making them theistic, doing, like, amazing pastime, why he has to do, how he had to, why he had to disappear, like, you know, in such a way. To make more confusion, because I haven't seen like you know some even kathakars make um, a mock about like you know the yadus they make a very bad remark about it you know so why it is that why why we, he has to do <laughs> the way it has been done okay so you see even even Krishna would have disappeared like that you know not leaving any material body so called still jo atheist they will still think. Krishna is kind of some kind of Mayavi. Look at Duryodhan. Krishna showed a sample Virat Rupa to Duryodhan in the assembly. Still, he couldn't understand. Right? So they will they will always be bewildered like that. So let them be. And if Krishna will not do this kind of thing, so what is the fun in that? 
you know the fun is that you when you find a mystery when you open some secret then it's a more you know fun in that there's more uh, more uh, you know delight in that uh, uh, something is very simple when is something simple to achieve there's no fun in that even when you when you take a puzzle game when you solve it you feel you have achieved something so that's why krishna bewildered people in common so that only set of people who really have that knack to come back to krishna to understand krishna to do his bhakti can understand so you know and then they feel you know okay then they, the bonding with krishna will become strong so krishna you know make this kind of thing you know sort of otherwise what is the fun in that you know because everything is so simple Uh, Krishna always makes fun of everything. <laughs> He just wants to enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Devotees also have like like his his amazing pastime. Thank you again so much yeah. for that. Any devotees? Any questions? Uh, probably we can explain about the club here. I think definitely the club part is also very confusing for many devotees. Why why Dronacharya did like that? You know, he was a wonderful disciple, a learning, a keen learner, like you know, um, self guru, <laughs> self self student <laughs> without a guru. Whatever it is, but yeah, definitely please go ahead. Bro. Okay. So people in India, generally, they say that a Kalavya was from Bhil Jati, means a low born. That is why Dronacharya uh, was partial to him. And he didn't accept him as a student in the first place. And then later on, he took his thumb uh, so that he couldn't practice anymore. Bahut bura was kisad, all these things. So first of all, understand that Dronacharya was not having his own Gurukul. That anyone can come and take admission in that. Dronacharya was very, 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 very poor Brahmana. He was so poor, he didn't have a fire in his house. He used to simply, you know, take wheat flour, put water, mix it and drink it. That was a time. So, Bhishma Dev knew about Dronacharya's capabilities. So they hired him. So the Kuru dynasty or the king at that time of Dhritarashtra, but anyways, he was advised by Bhishma Dev. They hired Dronacharya to train their 105 kids, 100 Kauravas and 5 Pandavas. So Dronacharya was on payroll. He was not having his free Gurukul. He was on payroll, There's like homeschooling for them. You know, in India, if you come to Delhi, so Delhi is Indraprastha, not Hastinapur. Hastinapur is a big kingdom, but not exactly the palace of Hastinapur was not in Delhi. Delhi is Indraprastha. Previously, it was Khandaprastha. Later on, become Indraprastha by Pandavas. So Hastinapur from, from Delhi, the two-hour drive is Meerut. There is a city called Meerut in UP. So that place is Hastanapur Palace. Still, you can find the ruins of the palace. Okay, and Guru Guru uh, Gurugram or Guru Gram, where I'm sitting right now, here was the Gurukul of Dronacharya. Yeah. So in, it's, it's still in the vicinity of Hastanapur. So Dronacharya was a higher teacher, so he cannot take any further disciples. So only one exception he has that he has 106 student, which is his own son Ashwatthama. That's all. So when Akalavya came, so that's the reason Dronacharya in the first place refused him. Not because of his jati from the caste, because Dronacharya cannot teach anyone else. He was bound. He was prom he given a promise that he will run this Gurukul only for 105 kids. So that's why he refused. Or bhi koi aata, to Dronacharya would have refused that person also. But now, Ekalavya did two mistakes. What he did, he should not have done. When Guru has, you know, said no to you for some reason, what he did, he was stealing the education. Aaj ki date ki modern moralities jo hai na, kal ki, they are totally different. I don't know on which level they are. I, I remember ek bar, ek Air France ka plane Hijack ho gaya tha. Okay. So uh, they asked for big ransom money and all that. So the lady of first lady of France, Prime Minister's wife, she said openly 
कि जो भी एनी वन हेल्प टू गिव दिस मनी टू दीपल मतलब टू दिस किडनेपर हाईजेकर जो इतना पैसा उसको देगा दैट पर्सन कैन हैव मी फॉर वन नाइट तो एवरी वन अपलोजिंग ओ वट अ ग्रेट लेडी अब ये आज की डेट की मोरलिटी है ये वहां नहीं चलती थी सो कॉल्ड मोरलिटी इवन एट दैट टाइम स्टीलिंग ऑफ एनी थिंग इज बैड इवन इज एन एजुकेशन आज की डेट में वो वो देखो ट्यूशन सेंटर के बाहर खड़े होके वो पढ़ रहा था टीचर जो पढ़ा रहा था यू नो तो वी विल अप्रिशिएट दैट गाय यू नो उसको पढ़ने का कितना शौक था एंड ऑल दैट एक लवे कुड हैव गॉन टू सम अदर गुरु ऐसा नहीं था कि देर वॉज ओनली वन गुरु को लोग द्रोणाचार्य इन इंडिया और भी टीचर्स थे ऑफकोर्स द्रोणाचार्य वॉज द बेस्ट बट ही कुड हैव टेकन ट्रेनिंग फ्रॉम सम वन एल्स बट नहीं ही डेड दिस एट दैट टाइम इट वॉज इम मॉरल स्टील एजुकेशन लाइक दैट सो ही डिड बट वो एक लेवल का ऑफेंस था पर इतना सिवियर नहीं था नो वट ही डिड ही मेड डेटी ऑफ द्रोणाचार्य ठीक है वो वहां से चोरी करता था एजुकेशन एंड यूज टू प्रैक्टिस then one day one dog came you know the story dog was barking so what ekalavya did he shot arrows in the mouth of dog ek bhi nahi bahut sare teer chala diye uske so that he cannot even close his mouth so that dog came running to gurukul ye dorona chare ke gurukul mein aaya to sabne dekha ye kisne kiya kya ho gaya some like from drona adryodhan type people you know they were appreciating what an archery wow kya teer mara hai and all that but dronacharya could see something else so wo pahunche kahan kisne kiya ye wo then they came to know ekalavya ne kiya and all that then ekalavya said ki main aaya tha aapke paas and then aapne nahi liya to maine aise you know i made your dt and i was taking education main aise dekh dekh ke practice karke sikha so dronacharya he said this is wrong at the same time usse zyada galat kya kiya to a non harmful creature like a dog what what application application kya kiya What, whatever vidya he has learned uska result kya nikla he used that vidya on an innocent animal like dog itni brutally wo bhi if there is any kind of you know lion tiger kuch hota samajh aata you know you slay that you know kshatriya used to hunt but ye ye to kya kiya isne that means his mentality jo his intention hai that is not very high class intelligence this guy doesn't have that be high class of morality that means whatever he has learned now jo isne seekh liya ab dekh dekh ke chori karke he is going to misuse it because he doesn't have that very high standard if he can harm a dog like creature to dusron ka hal kya karega ye getting angry aur gusse mein aake kiya because that dog was barking when ekalavya was practicing to gussa aa gaya use aur what he did itne sare teer maar diye usko so he is going to create havoc in the society and now he has learned this vidya ab wo to undone nahi kiya ja sakta na undo nahi kar sakte usko so dronacharya played a trick he said hey, you consider me you guru ekalavya ne kaha haan ji haan ji main aapko guru ji manta hu apna and uh, dronacharya said okay you also took education for me indirectly kehte yes guru dakshana to bani deni banti hai yes guru dakshana banti hai so he asked for his thumb right thumb so that he cannot practice further he cannot learn more things so then dronacharya told him you learned enough now you go back home agar uska angootha nahi lete na to he would have done bahut bahut galat karta ho just got he got little disturbed by the dog us kutte ka ye haal kar diya usne to baaki ko kya karta that's the reason ekalavya ka utha liya tha aur education kyun nahi diya pehle usko because dronacharya was higher teacher and then he did two mistakes one he was stealing vidya and he misused that vidya that's why dronacharya tricked him ye clear point hai koi galat nahi hua uske sath Yeah, because as, as you were mentioning that uh, with power actually comes responsibility. Yeah. But same power. This is over here is the same kind of example. Like you know, he got yeah. that that power. But yeah. when when somebody is very powerful, if he's not very sensitive in using his yeah. power, can create yeah. really a lot of big havoc. See, 
let's take another example ashwatthama he also know how to wield brahmastra even arjuna know arjuna knows how to wield brahmastra but dono mein difference kya tha arjuna is the only person who could you know uh, who could take back brahmastra ashwatthama nahi kar sakta tha when ashwatthama shot arrow on prikshit maharaj he could not take it back even sorry uh, sorry sorry not prikshit maharaj usse pehle before prikshit maharaj he shot another arrow on pandavas and duryodhana also shot the arrow same brahmastra now two brahmastra imagine what kind of destruction they could create but krishna said no no take it back so krishna was only uh, sorry arjuna was capable to take it back he was he was the right patra for brahmastra brahmastra usi ke paas hona chahiye jo usko control kar sake you know you are controlled by brahmastra so same way aikalavya ke us power to aayi but he was not responsible and he doesn't have that mentality or doesn't have that you know right uh, right intelligence to use that power okay thank you so much for for again for this wonderful session for the knowledge that you have shared so um, thank you everyone for joining thank you so much again to hopefully we'll see you thank again you and again uh, in our sangha thank you prabhuji jai prabhat ki jai vanchakar mantra gasta swami sudhitanam bhavayu vishnu vidyo namo thank you jai prabhat ki jai